and it's always something in your way. Oh, Cut off the part where I Three, pulled two. the wedgie. I know. Yeah. You see, somehow the world will change for me and be so wonderful. Did, did, did live life, breathe air. I know somehow we're gonna get there and feel so wonderful. Did, did. It's all for real. I'm telling you how I feel. So wake up the members of my nation. It's your time to be. There's no chance unless you take one. Every time you see the brighter side of every situation. Some things are meant to be. So give me your best and leave the rest of me. Leave it all to me. Just trying to be relevant. Leave it all to me. Why does that song make absolutely absolutely no sense because it, it doesn't make what sense what the shit it doesn't make sense at all the iCarly theme song makes absolutely no sense there are like so many metaphors it's but just for words nothing it's literally just inspiring words yeah like there's no chance to wake up the members of my nation what yeah so wake up the members of my is nation is it a rally cry it's your time to be there's no chance unless you take one every time you see the brother side of every situation. Some things are meant to be, so give me your best and leave the rest. What? Yeah, right? <laughs> it's just because Drake Bell was like, I need to make a paycheck and yeah. I can make words sound good together. And That's... You and I both know the best. We didn't even do an intro. Drake Bell makes some damn good music. Drake, I think Drake Bell is very underrated. But oh, right before we get to that, hey guys, welcome to episode <laughs> 17 of the Break Time Podcast. I'm Alex. I am Iman. And as you can see, Meanie Mon are already just right off the bat going straight into uh, not really even topics at all. We really don't have anything planned. We're just uh, essentially shooting the shit, which is what we do in really every episode. Yeah. But uh, anyway, but yeah, Drake Bell is very underrated Hell yeah, as man. far as the I mean, you know, I love Drake we both Bell. Know. Yeah. We did a shit of the talent show. Yeah, man. Like, <laughs> okay. So in, in case you don't know Meanie Mon, in, in, uh, what is that? Like seventh grade? Seventh. Seventh grade, Minimon joined our school talent show, and we sang "Fool the World" by Drake Bell in the talent show, and uh, sang a Drake Bell song. Oh yeah, it was it was hot as hell. Hot as it hell, was, temperature wise, or no? I mean, I was trying to say hot, but you know, like young kids, but I can't. Oh, I don't talk like that, uh, so it didn't come off as well. Yeah, in that context. Yeah, it's yeah, up. yeah. So um, anyway, yeah, dude. But like, like I write music. Like I was in the band and stuff. Yeah. And all of my music writing stuff is literally just. Based, not based off, but like I took huge inspiration for how Drake I write music Bell. from Drake Bell because the way that he makes choruses, the way the type of words and uh, I guess the vernacular he uses, yeah, um, was very like inspiring for me as far as how I do music and such. So that's um, crazy. Damn, I didn't even know that. Uh, yeah, no, a lot of my stuff is very Drake Bell. I thought it was definitely from like Nickelback and Smash Mouth and those guys. Because uh, it has nah. that quality. I'm just fucking Thanks, <laughs> thanks, man. <laughs> the thanks worst so bands much. I can think of. Yeah, you, you, you're, you're like, you know, I, I, I swear <laughs> you took some you took some notes from Tiny Tim, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Tiptoe through the... Beautiful. Uh, um, but, uh, but, yeah, no. Uh, <laughs> no, a lot of it was from Drake Bell. But, um... Speaking of Drake, I wasn't even going to talk about it because it's not timely anymore, really, because it happened like a week and a half ago, I think, at this point. What are you talking about? That's you a don't weird know segue, thing... speaking of Drake Bell. Yeah. What the fuck happened you to Drake You don't know the thing that happened with Drake Bell? What, is he dead? Dude, you really don't know the thing that happened with Drake Bell? I don't think so. Dude, okay, okay, perfect, because you can be the perspective of some of the audience members who have no idea what happened with Drake Bell. Okay. So, um... If you, or maybe you do know, and it just seems kind of out of date, because it happened like a week and a half ago. Okay. Anyway, but, um, so for our audience members, if for some reason you don't know who Drake Bell is, there was a show in the early 2000s called Drake and Josh. I think it had like four or five seasons. Um, Come on, we know what Drake and Josh is. But I'm just saying, I'm just giving a background <laughs> for anyone who might not know, in case like a 40 year old's listening to this and they're like, what okay. the hell is Drake and Josh? It, anyway, it's essentially a show about two stepbrothers having to live together and they just get into ridiculous situations. It stars Josh Peck, uh, who went on to do hit movies like Red Dawn, that was a joke. And then um, yeah. uh, Drake Bell, who went on to go back to Nickelodeon to do the Fairly Odd Parents movies. True shit. True like, shit. God. Uh, you're, okay, go ahead. Yeah, but he he had a pretty good music career after. Like, I I love his stuff. Yeah. And anyway, uh, but like last week, Josh Peck got married. 
Okay. And uh, he had this great wedding in Beverly Hills. Uh, beautiful wedding, great ceremony. His wife is uh, – sorry, I was checking the audio. But his wife uh, is a longtime girlfriend of his. She's stunning, beautiful. Wow, nice. Okay. Um, And Josh Peck, of course, now he's hot and sexy as hell. God damn it. Who's trans? So – huh? Is, is somebody trans or something? No, Why? I, because the way you brought this story up, you made it sound like he died or some shit. Okay, no, go ahead, go no, ahead. No, man, no. Well, something did die. Oh! Yeah, you're going to get to it. So, Josh Peck had his wedding. He invited all his co-stars from his most recent show that he did called, like, Grandfathered or something like that. Mm-hmm. Whatever bullshit show he did for, like, half a season and it got canceled. Oh, man. Like, it was some show. But he invited all his co-stars, a bunch of his friends from Hollywood. Um, and then there was one person who was not invited. Okay. And Drake Bell was not invited to the wedding. Okay. So, you know, maybe not a big deal. It shouldn't have been blown up. But Drake Bell went on Twitter and literally like a few days before that or like in the previous weeks, Drake Bell was tweeting pictures of him and Josh from the Amanda show. Do you remember the Amanda Bynes show? Yeah. Like, uh, you know, Amanda, Amanda. Right, yeah. So stupid. Anyway, but he was tweeting pictures from that and going like, oh, studs, like throwback. like, And it was him and a picture of Josh Peck. Yeah. So literally like a week after that or however many days after that was his wedding and he was not invited. Mm. And uh, Drake Bell went on Twitter and said, when you're not invited to the wedding, the message is clear. And that's all he put. Mm-hmm. And then he said, uh, he, he followed it up with something along the lines of officially cutting ties. I'm going to miss you, brother. And that, oh, like, Lord. yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and it was like this this huge thing because yeah. like all of a sudden Drake and Josh like the actors for them even though you know they're not brothers in real right. life th- there's a camaraderie there because you knew that they've been working since the Amanda Bynes show yeah like, big time it was they, them it's like Keenan and Kel exactly or Kid and Play or yeah you but know even what I mean? even uh, uh, Keenan and um, Kel yeah 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 even them like those they've shown up on Saturday Night Live with each other and right. on, like, the Jimmy Fallon they're show. synonymous with each other exactly like they still get together they still apparently have a good relationship and even if they don't in the public eye they do right and that's what matters but uh, so this was a similar thing where all of a sudden Drake and Josh these figures of brotherhood and getting together and friendship in real life are all of a sudden like falling apart you know wow, yeah. and and then uh, uh, so it was like this whole thing and there's a, a Facebook page called uh, uh that i found on facebook and it's called drake bell did nothing wrong and it's just a bunch of memes of drake bell and uh like jesus li- like th- there's memes of of uh god how do i explain it I-, I wish i could show you but it's on my phone and we're using that right now but uh it's like memes like making fun of josh yeah like there was a tweet uh that uh God damn it. I'm trying to think of a good one that's easier to explain. Oh, there was one of Josh Nickel or Josh uh, Peck. Uh huh. And uh, he was like jumped up on a stairwell, like not touching the floor. Yeah. And it said, The floor is Drake. And it's just like oh my a God. bunch of. I'm dip- so sick of this yeah, shit. Yeah. It's like a bunch of memes of like just that kind of stuff. Oh, and then they. They they did like the top ten the top four uh, most deadly snakes in America and it was like snake snake <laughs> and Josh Peck who made that damn Facebook uh, I don't page. know I was following it immediately because I was like this oh is the God. best you dug into that shit yeah man. I got so, you dug like into that I don't shit. get into the like normally I don't get into like the dumb celebrity petty that's shit that's our childhood though exactly that's I was, I was like I was like I gotta get into this like Drake and Josh is huge yeah so. Uh, but it was just hilarious, and then that was cool. So where... the air was never cleared up as to why he wasn't invited. There was no. No, they never said anything. But uh, oh I want to say this before I get to the next part of the story. But uh, there's one where uh, on that page, mm-hmm. someone uh, posted on it, and it said, "Oh look, I fixed the Drake and Josh uh, logo," and it just said Drake, <laughs> and it was just Drake Bell, and they <laughs> cropped out Josh on it. That's insane. Um, but so then, literally, like that whole time, everybody was like, "What's going on? Why is why is no one?" Like, like, why isn't he going to say anything? And then Drake, Drake Bell deleted his tweets. So, <laughs> yeah, he was trying to, like, take them back, I guess. Yeah. Or he didn't want to make it into a big deal, but then he already made it into a big yeah. deal. Um, and then uh, uh, Josh Peck, at least as far as I know, there was an interview that came out where he was like, yeah, sometimes people ask me, hey, where's Drake? And he goes, I don't know. Like, we're not really that close anymore. Mm. And there was another thing that came out that was all speculation that says apparently Drake Bell was bankrupt recently and Josh Peck doesn't want to talk to Drake Bell because he's bankrupt or some bullshit. I, that's all bullshit. But I'm just saying, like, that's the only thing I could find. And then um, literally, like, two <laughs> days after that happened, like, yeah. it was a big thing. And everybody kept pointing at the fact that Drake Bell, like, days before had posted a picture of him and Josh from the Amanda show. Yeah. Like, an old cast photo. Yeah. So a few days after this incident... 
uh, on his Instagram, Josh Peck posted a picture of him and another co-star That's from so the Amanda stupid. Bynes show. I'm not sure if he was trying to like poke fun or whatever, yeah. or like he was trying to take a jab. But that's what I totally perceived. And everybody in the comments was like, dude, what the fuck? Like, How could you not perceive it that way? Exactly. And it, it was funny. But anyway, that Facebook page that says, like, Drake Bell did nothing wrong. That's Th- insane. There was another one that was made that was called Josh Peck did everything wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it was, like, going back and forth. Anyway, but that was something. I'm surprised you didn't hear about it. Dude, it was like I'm not. I mean, that's. It was, it was like, to me, it, it's, it's a little dumb, petty thing. Yeah. But, like, but... to me, as far as something, like, from childhood. Like I jumped that on that show shit. really shaped so, our childhood. Exactly, man. I you jumped on that show was really so good? quick. What? Ned's Declassified School Survival Guide. That was a great show. Fucking amazing. I love Ned's Declassified. Oh my god, it was so funny. Um, no, Ned's Declassified. Even even the shows that came up with after, like Victorious, was pretty good. Really good. I, I really uh, enjoyed I, Victorious. I dug Victorious. iCarly was good for like the first maybe two three seasons. That's when it started getting cutesy. Yeah, like, iCarly was like, it was good, and then towards the end of its seasons, Mm -hmm. they started doing that thing where they went, oh, kids are idiots. Let's just yell and say weird shit. Pull the SpongeBob. Exactly. And then, yeah, and then now everything they have that's live action is bullshit, whether it's Disney or Nick. Oh, my God. It's horrendous what they have on those damn networks On Disney, it's terrible. Disney is dog shit. Disney is so bad. Like, but Damn. I, I've read interviews and things online where apparently the actors are told to act that way. Yeah. Like, it's like, hey, this is the mold of what Disney is right now, and it's selling. Mm-hmm. So act like this. Disney is that- now, it, it's not even for teens anymore. It's for little kids. Like, oh, yeah. I'd say nine and under. Ten and under. Oh, yeah, because, like, little kids are, like, eight years old, and they're like, oh, let's watch Austin and Allie. i got to see them get together. Like, it's dumb shit. Uh, but also, they market it towards the young kids, uh-huh. and that's fine. But also, they're showing young kids those tendencies of, like – I mean, maybe this might be me being, a like, an old conservative person. Right. But, like, they're showing young kids, like, oh, the dating, oh, the dramas of high school and shit. Like, yeah, at such yeah, a young yeah, age yeah, yeah. that when you show kids that at such a young age, they instigate those things. Yeah. Then they want drama in their life. Then oh, they we, we, were want so, we were showing the same, the same shit, though. Yeah, but I feel like... But it, it was a little more real. I was about to say, it's at an adult level where you understood, like, oh, hey... That's something I'm gonna deal with as an adult. Right. Like, but uh, can I put new, let me put it into perspective. Um, there's an episode. Just a silhouette. I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, just stop right now too. You, you can you can do it while I say this. So, but anyway, there was an episode of That's So Raven that got they got really popular in the last like year or so. Like people were posting clips from it. Yeah. And it was the episode where uh, Eddie was trying to get that job at that place in the mall, and then. Uh, Oh yeah, yeah you found yeah, yeah. you you found out that that the the manager was like, oh, I'm not gonna hire him because I don't hire black, black people. people. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Don't talk too much. You're away from your mic. Um. Anyway, but uh, yeah. She's like, I'm not gonna hire black people. So you understood. You're like, uh, like as a kid, yeah, what you perceived was, oh man, when I get a job, when I'm older, that's something that could happen. But it was always – they always had that threshold of this is me when I'm older. Right. Even in Drake and Josh, like like the problems that they had was dealing with their car, mm-hmm. dealing with girlfriends, the parents not wanting to give them so much responsibility. Mm-hmm. So in your head, subconsciously, you're like, oh, when my parents give me that responsibility, I'm going to have to deal with that. Right. Or when I get a car, I'm going to have to deal with that. Yeah. When I get a girlfriend, I'm going to have to deal with that. But what Disney shows are now showing kids is like, um, hey uh, – we're marketing this to nine-year-olds, and oh look, there's girlfriend problems, and yeah. everyone's trying to get together. Yeah. So then, to a nine-year-old, you're you're saying there's no threshold where that seems like they're adult, mm. because all the kids on Disney Channel are getting younger and younger. Yeah. And even like like I've seen shows, I, I don't remember what it's called, but there's one show where the girls like watching these rich kids, and they're dealing with problems like that too, like girls and all that shit. Yeah. And I'm like, God, you're uh, for me. You're showing younger kids those things, so then they instigate relationships. Yeah. They instigate drama. They instigate like trying to be in these situations that they perceive are cool. Yeah. Because of, uh, because of the shows that they watch. Well, I think it goes both ways because I know mm-hmm. being that age, you want to be old. You yeah. know what I mean? It's it's like it's like you want to accelerate the aging process. You know yeah. what I mean? You're never content with being seven. You always want to be like the big kids and shit. Um. So, I mean, when you see those kind of big kid problems, I think you do start to create those sort of big kid problems. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, everybody wanted to be – I remember when, when uh, wrestling was really huge. Everybody wanted to be like John Cena or, mm. or Kurt Angle. And, 
the, just the the wacky characters. You know what I mean? Yeah, Kurt yeah, Angle yeah. had the girl, the girls and shit, and p- the kids wanted to recreate that because that's what was cool. Being an adult, being older, having those problems were cool. Yeah. So I think it goes both ways. You know what I mean? That's why Spider Man. I was having this conversation with someone else. I know I'm going. <laughs> into, I'm going into superheroes a little bit, but yeah. it's because we're talking about the perception of characters and perception of media. Right. I feel like that's why Spider Man. And characters like him are so popular because he's a kid already. Mm-hmm. There's no like, oh, I'm going to get to that or I want to be old. It's I can be that right now because yeah. that's me. Like, mm-hmm. I'm that old. And then the same thing for for uh, for shows like, uh, man, what what was that? What was that one a long time ago? What's up? Um, Attacking the power of Juju? Nah, <laughs> nah the, the little dude. And, and he was he was a black kid, but he was in high school and he was like like nine or something. God, he, he was it was smart an old, guy. Smart guy. There you go. He's a smart guy. Yeah, yeah, exactly like that. Hell yeah, yeah. So that's what that reminded me of. Okay. But like again, like even at that uh, point, you're showing younger kids, hey, look, that's you. Like yeah, you yeah, can yeah. do that. Maybe you be smart. I feel like and do the progression of the the how the content of Disney Channel immature throughout the ages is insane. Yeah. Because what we thought was mature when we were watching That's So Raven and shit like that. The kids that were watching Smart Guy and shows like that were laughing at that so Raven. Yeah, yeah. Because if you look at the writing on Smart Guy and even like Keenan and Kel, it was so much more mature. Oh, yeah. It was like really oh, quality yeah. writing. Because you can, you know, I can watch an episode of Drake and Josh, of mm-hmm. That's So Raven, even Stevens today, mm-hmm. and I can go, I, I, uh, I can go, man, this was a little cheesy, but you can watch it and at a base level, you're like, like there's some stuff where you're like, this is so adult. Yeah. Like this is such an fuck. adult thing that they're talking about. I think about. one episode of Smart Guy, one of the characters went to jail or some shit, and one of the characters exactly. got somebody pregnant or some exactly. craziness. Exactly. And then Boy Meets World. Boy yeah, Meets yeah, World. Yeah. People were taking drugs. Was that on Disney Channel? Uh, it was because it used to show late night on Disney Channel. Oh, but it was the Nick at Night, huh? No, no, no. It was Disney. I thought. Oh, Disney. I swear okay. it showed on Disney because that's why I can't girl, remember. That's why Girl Meets World is on Disney. Okay, you're absolutely yeah, right. Yeah, you know? Absolutely So, right. But it was like one of the shows that came out like towards nighttime. Yeah. Like at least from my perception. I don't know if it was already older at that point. Yeah. And it was like kind of like an Adult Swim kind of thing. Anyway, but in that show, like they were dealing with relationships. Uh, Corey, right? That was the main character's name in Boy Meets World. Whatever the main character's Something name like in, that, yeah. Whatever the main character's name in Boy Meets World is, there's a part where he starts dealing with mental illness. Mm. And he goes to the doctor and... And then they give him uh, pills to help him deal with his mental illness, but they're just like empty pills to make it him. It was think. Corey's girlfriend. No, it was him. I remember. It was him okay. who was having the mental issue, and they were giving him pills. And he went back to his friends. They're like, "Oh, they gave me the pills to treat my mental illness." And they're like, "Dude, these are fake. They're just giving them to you so you can think you're getting help because there's mm. something wrong with you in your head." And I remember he cried. It was a whole thing. But then, like, it, those are real adult like things. Yeah. And then. That is some shit you will not see on on Shake It Up or Oh exactly because again just the the uh, the uh, um damn it the uh, what's up No, I was just thinking about it Oh the That's So Raven thing yeah with the racism that's never gonna be brought up like that never will you see never. that again not today Hell um, no and then there's even episodes of Drake and Josh I can't remember the exact episode but there's an episode where uh, someone stole something and they had a really serious moment where like, oh, this is a thief or someone did something wrong. Yeah. Like, there were times when those shows would stop. Right. And come to a halt. And are we getting an ad? Or did your did laptop just come up? Come did it die? I think so, man. I thought it was plugged in. It wasn't plugged in. It wasn't? It's not going to reach. Uh, well, we're going without it. No, it will reach, actually. Oh, okay. I well, figured it wouldn't. Oh, uh, you're good. Just plug it in, I guess. Anyway, but, uh, like, there were parts of those shows where they would slow down, and they would completely come to a halt, and they would go, hey, this is a legitimate issue that we're going to have to deal with, yeah. you know? Um, and and that's what I always thought was really cool about them. Like, there were times when those shows did completely jar you and kind of make you uncomfortable almost, because it was like, hey, we're not screwing around anymore. This is a real shit right. thing. They respected like, the fact that some kids do have intellect despite the fact that they're kids. Oh, yeah. And then now, like you said, just as the shows come out, they're like, oh, we're appealing to a younger audience. Yeah. Oh, we got to do this. Oh, we got to do that. You know, we got to we have to make it more kid friendly. We got to throw in uh, white guys in this show with a black girl. And yeah, the token black character. Exactly. And it's just kind of like, like they just don't make shows to make shows anymore. Yeah. Um, Like, like, uh... 
like what I always thought was really cool was there were shows like That's So Raven and The Proud Family uh-huh. that were centered around kind of like I guess black culture or yeah. black just yeah, black yeah, family yeah. blackness yeah. yeah the black experience and and I thought that was really cool because y- you were you you had your characters like Raven and her family yeah and they act like any other family because everyone's the same but there's kind of that disconnect because you're like they're black right. and at the time that was kind of a not a newer thing but at the time it was like oh, this is interesting because they're making a, a push for equality. They're making a push for this is not different. But then mm-hmm. they threw in characters like her friend Chelsea, which right. if you were not of uh, color of ethnicity, you kind of lo- you kind of viewed everything through her yeah. and her ignorance to certain things. And you was can answered. so tell what the creators of the show were going for. Obviously, yeah. it was an all black team. Yeah, and you could tell they said in the white in, in in the writing room. I can guarantee they said something like this. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna do what they do. Right in their shows, right mm-hmm. with with all white creators and an all white cast and a token mm-hmm. black character. Yeah. But we're gonna reverse everything and put them in our shoes, and we're gonna give them the token character, and we're gonna be in the spotlight twenty four seven. Yeah. Be about via, via the black experience. Yeah. Here I'll let you get that, and I'll talk. But um, yeah, I think you gotta log in on this one up here. Oh, okay. Um. Anyway. Um. But yeah, and I. But like today, you know, you can argue like, oh well, even back then. They were throwing in these characters and they were doing it this way to get an audience or, you know, but the difference is back then they did it in a tasteful manner. Mm -hmm. They did it in a manner that wasn't treating anyone like they were like they were idiots. And they also didn't highlight it. Mm -hmm. If you watch a CW show today or if you watch a Disney Channel show and someone is gay, not in Disney, but let's take CW, for instance. If someone's gay, if someone's black, if someone's Asian, they stop and go. They they stop and make it a point to go, dude. I'm Asian and I deal with these issues. Or dude, I'm gay and my dad doesn't respect right, me. Right, like they make right, it a thing. Right. Like and and that's so Raven. It was never made a thing that they were black mm-hmm. until the one episode where they faced a harsh reality of, hey, racism is a thing. Yeah. You know, but um, I don't know. I I, I just I guess kind of round out what we're saying is they don't do that anymore. Yeah. Like it's very much, let's sell merchandise, mm-hmm. and we need to get as many Wizards of Waverly Place ones off the shelf as we can. Exactly, you know, and that's just unfortunately how that goes. Yeah. Um, speaking of media that becomes more and more garbage, uh, I guess this will be our film time segment. Um, oh my God, I know where this is going. Yeah, so uh, th- this will be our film time segment. Film time is a segment of break time where we just talk about movies and. Uh, trailers, things upcoming, things we've already seen, and uh, Transformers, uh, the fifth Transformers movie, Transformers: The Last Night, just came out this past weekend. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. I forgot how much it opened to. I didn't look up how much it opened to, um, but it doesn't deserve anything it opens up to. So, Hell no! Like, so I've gotten the opportunity to see it. I just saw it last night. It's fresh on my brain. Iman just saw it this past weekend. Like two days ago, so it's still oh, fresh. Still fresh. Oh, okay, cool. So yeah, we just saw it this week. So you saw it Monday? Yeah, Monday. Monday. Okay, yeah. So I saw it Tuesday. Yeah. So um, yeah, so we both just saw Transformers Five. Um, I wanted to bring it up just kind of to get our quick thoughts on it, see what we thought about the movie, and I know it's going to lead into a further conversation. Yeah. But uh, Iman, what were your thoughts about the movie? Just out of the gate, just you know. Thoughts about the movie. Definitely better than the last one. I'll give it that. It was better than the That's last one. That's also not that hard to do. At we, all. And at now all. we're getting an ad. But it is. It is. It's a good thing to uh-huh. step up, at least. I, improve. Yeah. Least. It, yeah. Because the trend in Transformers was it got worse and worse and worse which with each movie he released. Yeah. But it's it's also like, like you're walking through a yard and you're just taking step after step and you're stepping in dog shit. And then you step in a hard piece of dog shit that doesn't get stuck to your shoe, and you're like, yeah. ah, at least, at least it didn't get stuck to my shoe. Like, well, yeah, but it's like, damn, at least he was somewhat listening to the feedback we were giving him. Finally, you know what I mean? I don't, I don't think so at all. But I, I think he kind of was. I, I think he kind of was. So with, with, the, with the cube thing, he didn't do that like he did in the last movie. Yeah. Um, so we'll get more into it. But if you like had to that. give it a rating, what would you out give of it? a one to ten? One to ten. One to ten. I give it a solid three. Three. three to four. Wow. Okay. So I saw it too. I thought I did think it was better than the fourth one. The fourth one was absolute garbage. That fourth was one, one was so bullshit. Mm-hmm. Um, and this one, like Iman said, it is a step up. I don't want to give it too much credit for that because literally all they had to do was have people who could speak English for it I'm to be a step up. I'm not giving credit for that for the but... fourth one. I would do. Th- in my opinion, this is like a one out of ten movie for okay. me. Like th- for me, this is one. I'm not yeah. even gonna give it a two or a three or nothing. 
Um, Fair enough, man. And that's just because I gave it a scale from one to ten. If I gave it a scale from zero to ten, it would have been zero. I yeah. hated the movie. Yeah. Um, but it's crazy though, because as we were watching it, I, me and Serena went to go see it. And Serena, as we're walking in, she goes, "Hey, this is actually my first Transformers movie. I didn't know that." Whoa. And I was like, "I was like, I'm so sorry." And she was like, "She's like, well, I'm kind of excited." I'm like, "Why?" She goes, "Cause it's like a cultural thing now uh-huh. to go see a Transformer movie and know it's gonna be shit. Like, yeah, like because uh, besides the first one, all the other ones have kind of been shit. Yeah. So I was like, okay, literally, we're ten minutes into this movie and things have happened where she was looking at me like, "Is is this real? Like, yeah. is this?" This is what's happening in the movie right now. And yeah, I was man. like, yeah, like, at least in Transformers 4, we got into, like, 30 minutes of the movie, and then they started doing bullshit. Mm-hmm. And then they started making jokes about how this 20-year-old dude could bang this 18-year-old girl. God and, damn the yeah, face. But it was, like, like 30 minutes in, we got that bullshit. Right. This movie is, like, three Out seconds the in. gate, man. Yeah, like, like there's a night, like, like the s- slight spoilers, very sl- – okay, I am going to mention a few things about the movie. Nothing that is going to spoil the movie. I'm going to mention characters and how they were acted and kind of time frames. Um, but so very slight spoilers. But if if you if you care about Transformers spoilers, just get out of here. So um, the the very beginning part of it takes place in like medieval times or the Dark yeah. Ages or whatever. Yeah. And there's this character that is like riding a horse in armor. It's medieval times, and he pulls out this bottle. First off, this bottle looks clean as hell. It looks uh-huh. like it's it's a modern bottle, uh-huh. and he's like like he's riding, and everyone's having a really serious battle, and it cuts to him, and he's like, "Oh, I'm going to drink more of this beer. Oh yes. Oh, ooh, I'll stop tomorrow. Like, yeah, like yeah, just yeah, completely yeah. ridiculous." And I was like, "Really? Like you yeah. couldn't wait like ten minutes like into the movie?" Actually, my uh, my guy Isaac and I we showed up a few minutes late, so we missed that part. But we did see the whole battle of the the the, the, the medieval part. We did see some of it, but I think we missed that part. You of see it. the part where the the thing came in. Yes. Where, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Yeah. So three. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah, that the very very beginning, there's that part before. Did you see where he was? God, because I, I want to point. Did you see where that character went to the cave thing to get what they were looking for? Yes. Okay. So you literally just missed a little bit. A like very. You missed small, like two minutes. Yeah. Um. But in those. But my point. In those two minutes, they were already making jokes like that. Yeah. And it was bullshit. Damn, and, dude. Um, but you know what, man? I found the flaw with Michael Bay. One of the big flaws. Hmm. He cannot shoot a dialogue scene to save his life. No. Because get this, get this. How would you, as a director, director hmm. Alex Chavez, how would you shoot a... What kind of cinematography would you use to shoot a action scene? Right. An action scene, you use a lot of probably close-ups, some yeah. some kind of uh, maybe a few wide angles to show the scope of the action. What's going on and then yeah. the detail of it, right? Yeah, exactly. And then maybe you do like a few sweeps uh-huh. or whatever. Uh-huh. But I, I get kind of get where you're going because I felt that he did those things. But listen, listen, listen. Go ahead. He does that shit in normal dialogue scenes. Exactly. Let's say let's – say, it's a, it's a normal dialogue scene, right? Like in a Steven Spielberg movie. This is how we go. Hey, man, um, what do you want to go eat? I don't know. I think Burger King had his new burger they released. All right, cool. Let's go check that out. Yeah, That's yeah. it. If yeah. Michael Bay shot that shit, there'd be a, there'd be a, a sound score for some reason. There'd yeah. be dramatic close-ups for some reason. The, the exactly. camera would be There'd be, be a camera flare. In. Yeah, a fucking camera flare. Yeah. There's dramatic-ass music in the background, and they're just discussing where they're going to get breakfast from. Yeah. So the whole movie... Is shot like that, so it feels like one giant climax. All this movie is is just which, climax, which lessens it. Exactly, which lessens it because the, cli- the the point of climax is what a climax is is the crescendo to the story. Yes. The story is building and building and building and building to reach the climax, uh-huh. which is the point of highest uh, uh, highest excitement, highest um, what's the word? Highest uh, god damn it. Um, uh, shit, what is that word? Highest uh, stake. Yes, yes, yeah, that's it. Stakes are the highest. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and uh, for Michael Bay, everything is high stakes. Mm-hmm. Talking is high stakes. Oh, yeah. And uh, like, like you said, that completely lessens the movie. And the other thing is uh, just the way that those – like people will say two sentences and every third word is a cut yes. in the movie. And that's insane. And uh, my, my other thing is that – did you notice the aspect ratio? Yeah. 
Yeah, I yeah. saw that in Jeremy John's review. It yeah, he switched he, every. He mentioned it, and as we were watching it, I was gonna look for it. Totally forgot. Serena brought it up to me, and Serena doesn't give a shit wow. about Serena. Like, like she she likes movies, but yeah. like I'm like into movies. Yeah. I'm like I I care about how they're shot, like what the score is, right. the dialogue, and everything. Serena just kind of was watching, and she went, "Why why does that keep happening? Like, why does what keep happening?" And she goes, "Why does that black bar keep showing up and then leaving?" You know what, man? I sat way too close. It was a big ass IMAX screen. It was mm. the it was the biggest theater I've ever been in my in my fucking yeah. life. Where did you see that? Casablanca. Oh, okay. Big ass theater. Yeah. I walked in. I was like, "What the hell?" Anyway, I sat really close. I was like mm. the fourth row. Jesus. So I didn't see. I didn't notice the fine detail. But I know yeah. for a fact, if I would have sat further back, I would have noticed. No, the that aspect shit. ratio was so annoying. Jesus. And it was like it would change. Like you know, like for example, they do it really well in Christopher Nolan's. Uh, I think Jeremy Johns mentions this too. Like he uses this as the the comparison. But in the Dark Knight trilogy. Like the last one, for example. Yeah. The part where he's fighting Bane is shot wide, like uh-huh. full screen. And then uh, he knocks him into the building, and all of a sudden the aspect ratio goes to IMAX. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you see that. You see that it changes, but it stays in IMAX for right. that scene. Right. And in Transformers, there's a part where he's like talking, and it's standard. Mm-hmm. And he's like, hey, 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 this, 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 and that. What do you think, IMAX? Well, I think that standard, that we should also do IMAX. And then yeah. we can standard. And like, yes, it was dude, just for like, no reason. Like, just change aspect ratios between shots. Yeah. Like, he would be you saying. You know what I think it was? I think Michael like, Bay is so money hungry and so cheap that rather than buying two IMAX cameras and two standard cameras, he bought like one of each <laughs> but needed yeah. multiple cameras to shoot a scene. Yeah. So he said, fuck it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just shoot both and cameras. Just like, Come just on. shoot the damn scene. That's the only thing I could think of. Yeah. And then there was, th- there were like the. The, the I'll give it credit. This is the least amount of product placement I've seen in a Transformers. Yeah. Uh, but the one big one was when that, not to spoil it, but there's a there, there's a part where Mark Wahlberg's character is given a Bud Light. Yeah. And yeah. and the per the thing that hands him the Bud Light literally tilts the the name up to the screen. Yep. yep and yep. you see it walk over to him, and the full name is in the middle of the screen. And then yep. Mark Wahlberg's sitting there and uh, watching TV, looking like an American drinking a Bud right. Light. And I'm like, I hate you. Yeah. Like I was so upset. I saw that scene, and the first thing I thought of was, Wow, Alex is gonna shit on this so hard. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's I was all upset I because of, man. remember the scene I was upset with the most yeah, yeah, yeah. in the fourth one was when they crash landed in the middle of the city during the the, cli- yeah, the climax. And then randomly there are just Bud Light cans on the floor, uh-huh. and this guy goes, "Hey man, what are you doing?" And he goes, "Huh, huh, what, huh? You gonna yell at me? I'm Mark Wahlberg." And he picks up the the Bud Light and he cracks it open and he drinks it and he goes, <laughs> "Huh, huh, I'm Mark Wahlberg." And yeah, he, like, drops I shit remember that for man. No that was reason, crazy. no reason. And then how this, about what's the up? character? I'm not even gonna say the name of the character or mention the attributes of the character, but I guarantee you're gonna know who it is. Huh. How about the character in the movie that had no reason to be in the fucking movie? Which one? Ah, you're <laughs> Seriously, right, you're right. Which one? The dude, or, or the one with the glasses at the junkyard? No. The Hannibal Ooh, Lecter. Which the one? one? With the glasses. <laughs> and the black guy? Yeah, the black guy. I don't want to oh, say Oh, I was that. hoping he would die. Anyway, um, no. Hannibal, the little girl? Yeah. Little girl? Uh, little girl had no reason to be there. She was the, reason the, I the reason I don't say the black guy or any other character that had no reason to be there is because they didn't center the trailer around that character. Exactly. Like the goddamn movie is going to be about that character. Yeah. Like the 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 in the trailers, the little girl is like, we need to save them. We need to help them. And you know, it has the epic music of Mark Wahlberg going, "You want to fight in this war? You can't handle this war. Exactly. You can't handle this war. You got to get out of here." She's like, "But I want to fight." And he's like, "Okay, little girl." We're gonna fight, and then it goes boom, boom. Transformers, yes. like, yes. and then I'm like, I was like, Dude, man, she's gonna play a that. big part, and then she's in the and beginning you, twenty minutes. And you and then know what's she, crazy? What? Go ahead. He was right. What like, a, I thought it was gonna be some triumphant, like, 2017 super liberal girl power. I thought she was gonna overcome what Mark Wahlberg was saying and actually play a huge part in this war. No, Mark Wahlberg was absolutely right. Because she had about four nervous breakdowns in the goddamn movie. Yeah, she even, couldn't handle it. There's even a part. So, like, essentially she's in. The, this little girl's in it for the beginning of the movie. And then partway through the movie, like, 30 minutes, 20, 30 minutes in, she's gone. Right. Mark Wahlberg does his own thing for two hours. She shows up for the last, like, 20 minutes of the movie. Contributes nothing. Yep. Runs away right before the big thing happens. Yep. And, like. How about the humans? 
period in this movie. Oh, the humans suck. Oh, they pissed me off. Yeah, so just... When just, will they realize... Just, just so we're clear, this is all just becoming us shitting on Transformers uh, Transformers 5. And I'm just going to go ahead and say it right now, because uh, for the tens of viewers that we have, I'm just going to go ahead and talk about this. Like, just like just talk about the movie. I don't care. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's, not, there's nothing to spoil. It's a shit movie. Okay, yeah. Like, if you want to see it, turn this part of it off, because we're probably going to talk about it for a while, and go see it. Yeah. But... Like, uh, it, You're doesn't, not gonna, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. How we're about gonna, we just, if you haven't seen it, we'll just shit on this movie together, okay? Okay. Even if you are planning on seeing it, we're just shitting on this movie together because you know it's going to suck. So yeah, let's at just this point, enjoy yeah. the shitty movie. At this point, if you're going to Transformers movie, you know what you're Exactly. You know what you're in for. Yeah. Come on. No fun. Yeah. Kind of like uh, when, you're girl, when you're a girl and you're asking for it, you know? Right. Um, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> you shouldn't have worn that fucking top. <laughs> um, um, no, so, but just, like, the little girl thing was absolutely terrible. And then uh, the the characters like the hu- like uh, I was so cringing when so there's a character they introduce in this movie that takes place of the hot girl right in the movie right uh, because in the previous movie the hot girl was Mark Wahlberg's daughter and it was really weird and her boyfriend or yeah. thing so this one they had to go oh we had to get a hot girl in there <laughs> so this hot girl is a college professor or like a professor that's right that's thing. right yeah 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 so she plays she takes the place of the Megan Fox character yeah. of the Victoria's Secret model from the third one of the hot daughter from the last one she's that character she's yep. the girl to look at now uh, what I didn't like about her is that she – I get it. They need her because in the film, she's the only one who can wield the, the staff that they need to save the world yeah. through some bullshit. But I get that. That's fine. I'm along with that. But she did absolutely fucking nothing uh-huh. except look pretty. Yeah. And there was – there's literally a part – and Serena pointed this out where she gets kidnapped – Remember mm-hmm. she gets kidnapped by the, yeah. the 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 Autobot takes her to the mansion to talk to the dude so he can explain what's going on. Mm-hmm. So but he kidnaps her and she's wearing like a frumpy shirt and like some slacks because yeah. she was at work. And they take her to the mansion and then in the next scene where they're all talking in the mansion, she's wearing like this tight – her ass is popping out like Jesus. cocktail dress. Now I will be completely honest with you. What? I was ready for the movie to end about five minutes into it starting. So oh, yeah. I was falling asleep during the movie. I was oh, checking dude. my stocks during the movie. I was I was dude. talking to Isaac during the movie. Same thing. I dude, I my hate for this movie not hate, my disgust for this movie almost got me into a fight after the movie. Why? No, 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 no I'm kind of exaggerating. I almost got me into a fight, but we had an exchange of words, me and Isaac. Not with each other, but with another group. Uh-huh. Cause the movie was so bad. There were a few parts in the movie where Isaac and I would look at each other and fucking belly laugh. We would try our hardest to hold it in, but they were yeah. parts so bad that we would just laugh our yeah. asses off, right? And we were doing that, and there's one part, I'm going to spoil it, spoiler good, alert, good. where the old man, this goes into the, the thing I was saying about how the humans had no purpose yeah. in this. They were just fucking shit up even worse with their little weapons. Where the old man, this is supposed to be his badass triumphant moment in the movie where he his cane turns, oh, turns into, into a, a, gun. a machine gun and he starts shooting Megatron, right? And Megatron, I, I liken it to, like, imagine a five-year-old shooting you with a Nerf gun, right? And beyond that Nerf gun is your mom in a burning car. Yeah. You're going to smack that kid out of the way and get your mom in a burning car, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly what the humans were like to the Autobots, the Decepticons in this movie. Yeah. Because there's a, there's a scene where Decept- or, um, Megatron is talking with the other Decepticons about this is how we're going to take over the Earth and restore our planet. And the old dude sneaks up behind them and this is supposed to be his badass moment. He's like 90. He flips his cane and the cane turns into a machine gun and he's shooting the, the, the dude, right? He's shooting uh, Megatron. He's like bouncing off his and they're shoulder. bouncing off of him. He's like, oh, what the hell is that? And the yeah. badass music is playing. He's supposed to be a badass, the old guy. At that part, I was like, what the fuck? So I look back down at my stocks. I look up. I hear, I hear, uh, puny humans. Boom. I look up. And I see this old man, Anthony Hopkins, real, like lifeless body, just flying like twenty feet in the this air. This fat old dude, like like <laughs> like, like a possum in the air, like oh! <laughs> yes, dude. So get, this is my perspective. I look down, I look up, I'm looking at the movie. He's a badass. His cane turns into a machine gun. The, the badass music is going. He's using all the badass angles. I look down, hear oh, puny humans. No. I hear Megatron say, "Puny like humans." A yes. I hear he a was loud bang. Four seconds ago. <laughs> Now he's upside down. His cane is nowhere to be found. His clothes are all torn up. (laughs) (laughs) Look at this poor old man. 
And so he lands in a crater and just fucking dies. And so me and Isaac, we bust out laughing, right? Oh, and so there's this couple next to us. And I'm not gonna lie, I fucked up. I was I was, I was being a disturbance. How did you? Fuck I was up? being a disturbance. You laughed. Exactly. That's the bullshit. That, we weren't talking. We weren't talking. Right. Okay. We, we fucking. To be laughed. fair, you were on your phone, so maybe that could have. No, I mean, because she she looks at me. It's it's four of them. It's a husband. It's um a couple, two married couples, about middle aged, right? Uh, white. So there's context. They're really uh, bitchy. Anyway, they look at us, and the wife goes. It was the most aggressive shush I've ever heard in my life. Oh my god! So I was god. like, "Damn, okay, my." Bad. I wouldn't have fucking done that. I would have dealt with that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I would have been like, "I'm like, you see what's going on, you dumbass." No, like, no, I wasn't trying dude, to do all that shit. No, I wasn't trying to do all I that shit for that. Oh my god, because I I hate Transformers so much <laughs> that I would have caused the scene just to get the movie theater <laughs> shut down. Fuck the goddamn tickets! Come on, no, you can't do that. No, man. I wasted twenty two dollars, man, watching that fucking movie. Anyway, um, oh god. So she shushes me, right? And so I'm like, you know what? This movie is shit, but it's just my perspective. She could somehow reason. With, her son could be in this goddamn movie, and she could love it. I don't know. So let me just respect the, the fact. Yeah, she's like that. These my people, son Optimus is on screen, <laughs> right? So I was like, let me just respect like, the fact Thank that you, Mom. these people <laughs> bought the tickets. And let me just be quiet. So I was like, Isaac, they're getting mad, man. Let's chill out. Mind you, we couldn't chill out. We kept laughing, but we were uh, much more silent this time. And so we're leaving the theater, right? And Isaac and I, we go to the bathroom because for some reason I have to piss really bad after a movie. And so, Especially one that's two hours and 30 oh, minutes. Yeah. It's two and a half hours long. Yeah, for some reason. That's, that's exactly why. Ridiculous. I, yeah, I know no, why. Literally, the point where Bumblebee and Optimus fight uh -huh. that I saw in the trailer, I was like, oh, this is the climax. They're going to deal with it. The movie's going to be over soon. Yeah, I couldn't take it. I could not now, take it. Now, that part happened, and I was like, oh, okay, the movie's going to wrap up. Yeah. And it wraps up for 30 fucking minutes. It was and I'm like, insane. oh, my God. I really like, thought about getting point, up and leaving. I did, too. Like, Serena was like, can we just leave? And I'm like, Whoa, yeah, she, she, said she said that. And I was like, I'm sorry. I almost left. Remember, you were there. Yeah. I almost left in the fourth one yeah. when Mark Wahlberg threw a football at that guy, and he oh, threw yeah. out the window. I wanted to leave, and I told Serena, I was like, I was like, I'm staying. I gotta be a trooper. I gotta, gotta watch be it. A trooper. Yeah. We should so. just get up and leave one day, man. Yeah. Like, we I really want to get up and leave. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> but uh, it's just thirty extra minutes in silence. <laughs> nothing. Anyway, so as we're walking into the bathroom, across the hallway is one of the girls from the couple. I guess she's waiting on the other couple to get out of the movies. Mm -hmm. The other three in the group to get out of the movies, and so she's just standing there. And then as I'm walking in, I see that they all finally congregate. So I'm kind of keeping an eye on them because I know people like that often have shit to say when the situation is Yeah, because they're over. white. Exactly. So, <laughs> so... And, and I have a theory about that, why white people love this movie, but go ahead. Okay, okay, okay. Go ahead. So we're walking into the theater, we're walking into the bathroom, and I'm looking back and they're still there. They're just sitting there. No reason to be there. And so Isaac and I, we... Oh, they're waiting on you, man. Yeah, we use they're the bathroom. They're waiting on you. They're like, I'm going to pick on this little black boy. We use the bathroom, wash our hands, leave. They're still sitting there. I make con I make eye contact with one of the fat bitches from the group, which is the one that had the most to say, and they start walking slowly ahead of us, right? But this fat bitch, guess what she says? Hey, me and Isaac were talking about the movie. We were still laughing, and she goes, "Hey, look, it's the guys from the movie that wouldn't shut up. They're still talking." <laughs> and, and you didn't like, say shit. Whoa, whoa! I did say, "Like, get oh, fucking finish." Okay. And I was like, "Uh, yeah, the fucking movie's over. Why, why would we not be talking? You're talking to us, right?" And she didn't say shit. She just turned around and kept walking. And so, me oh and my Isaac, god, oh man, I hate that shit. <laughs> That's fucking annoying. When they right? want to say shit, and then you say shit back to them, they're like, "Oh, I wasn't prepared for a fight. You're just exactly. supposed to. You, you're supposed to be submissive and take my bullshit." Exactly. Like, and so me and Isaac, I purposely did this. I was hoping one of her bitch ass husbands or one of the husbands from the group would turn around and say some dumb shit because me and Isaac were talking shit about them we're like two feet behind them we're talking shit about them so loud God. mocking her voice and shit we crying I, you, they're still not shutting up mocking her voice being so derogatory towards them we were being little instigators that night I'm not gonna sit here and yeah. lie to you you have and to be didn't fucking turn around but you know what you man you have to be so he can pull out his gun he can shoot you <laughs> and then we start something you know <laughs> but no you know what man I was telling Isaac, it's always the fucking wives. The husbands didn't say shit the entire time. Oh, yeah. They didn't even look at us, right? And, and you ever notice what kind of couples that is? Go ahead. White couples. <laughs> like, yeah. like, I just If it was a Mexican couple, if it was a black couple, if it was an Asian couple, they would have turned around and went like, some... hey, man, what's going on? But the white girls are always like, honey, I'm independent. Let right. me start the argument. And mind you, people, this is not racism. This is an observation. 
Yeah, this, this is, is where we live. It could totally be different exactly, where you live. But exactly. What was that movement? Exactly. I'm sorry, I'm getting into this shit, man. I got sorry. my tea going. The Go ahead. laptop fire is nice and hot. Anyway. Um, the laptop fire is nice and hot. Yeah, the husbands didn't say shit, but the wife, the mm-hmm. one wife, she was getting real bold. And so oh, I was talking shit behind their back, and shit. I know they could hear oh, me because the shit. husbands were looking real oh, uncomfortable. Oh, shit. Because mind you, I'm a six-foot muscular black guy. I'm not going to take the shit. Oh, I'm yeah. My boy Isaac, he's Mexican. So in their mind, it's like, oh, shit, it's the two worst minorities in the country. God <laughs> Damn, why couldn't it be a couple of innocent Asians or some shit? I know, right? So, um, <laughs> the husband's like, so man, they- he look a lot less black in the movie theater. <laughs> <laughs> so they get up, um, or they start walking a little faster. The husband have the little hands in their pocket. They're kind of nervous, they're looking around like, honey, <laughs> shut the fuck up. And so they leave. <laughs> honey, he's that- black. He's going to steal our hubcaps. Let's go. <laughs> and Come that's on. the end of we it. We have to get to yoga. Um... <laughs> And that's the end of it. Oh, I told man. I was telling Isaac, you know, we were talking shit. We were hoping they would say something, but mind you, I had no intention of putting my hands on either one of them, the two husbands, because uh, one, they were older, pushing fifty. It looks like you know what I mean. Yeah. But that's still young enough to get your ass beat. And you <laughs> don't, you don't want to touch somebody like that because them motherfuckers are so quick to start shit, but even quicker to sue. Oh, they will now, sue the pants off your ass. I would have been more worried about if it's an old, conservative-looking white couple. That's exactly what it was. Okay, exactly. I would have not done shit. I, I would have talked all the shit I wanted to, but I would have oh, yeah. not put my hand on anyone because I'm not worried about them suing. I'm not worried about them saying shit. I'm worried about the white guy who has the carry license and who's going to be a fucking exactly. idiot. And he's going to turn around and pull out a gun because he's a dumbass and we're in Texas. And he spent and- 400 bucks on that handgun and he's looking for a reason to use it. God exactly. It. He's like, I've targets- got $2 bullets in this thing. Exactly. I'm not waste. Them targets in the backyard is not holding his ass over. He wants some yeah. live targets. Yeah. I was not going to be live target over Transformers. He's like, he's like they're the same color. <laughs> <laughs> um... Yeah, man, God. that was my that was my. I would have died over Transformers. Oh, Make hell Michael Bay no. stop this bullshit. Hell no, he's ruining people's lives. As a benefit for the death of the young men in San Antonio, Texas, I will be shooting another eight Transformers movies. Oh God, <laughs> he doesn't even have an accent. I, I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why. Um, yeah, but, oh dude, that movie's such garbage. Like, I, we were watching it and. I had kind of a moment yeah. where we were in a theater. It was a Tuesday night. There weren't a lot of people there. I don't know how many people were in your theater, but there weren't a lot of people there. But there was a couple like directly behind us, right. and I would laugh, and I would, like I got so comfortable in that theater, like I spread myself out oh. over everything, and I was like, "You had to, you had to buckle yeah. in." <laughs> I'm like, "I'm like, movie. we're gonna be here for a while. It's gonna <laughs> exactly. be a long night." Um, <laughs> So, but then, like, I would laugh, or I mean, I'd be talking to Serena and be like, "This is complete bullshit." Yeah. And I turn around and look at the other couple, and I'd be like, "Am I bothering them?" Exactly. They were, do- they were doing was... the same shit. They were doing the really? same shit. They were oh, making fun of it and talking. How can you shit? Like the goddamn fun audience? Exactly right. So, uh, but yeah, but it was. <sighs> you know what I want to do, man? What's up? From what I hear from like um, uh, moviegoers and even like stand-up comics. Yeah. Going to theaters in primarily minority, low-income areas. Mm-hmm. It's like supposed to be really fun. Really, really fun. Oh, because they probably get into it. They like, get into the shit because there's oh not like God. a societal barrier. There's not yeah. the white people like, excuse me, don't talk. Right. My 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 my, uh, my suede shoes are hurting. Yeah. Like you know what I mean. Um. Uh. I don't know. It's but, like this in that this my personal experience can even prove this theory. Let me cut the camera back on real quick. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. So while Iman is doing that, just to kind of wrap up some of the the, just the movie thing like don't go see the movie because if you go see the movie if your friend goes to see the movie if you take people to go see the movie what happens is they make more money yeah and then they make another one oh you know and they just need to they need to quit the bullshit i think this is the last one michael bay is going to direct but i don't know if they offer him enough mansions he'll do anything dude there was a post credit scene i know there was a post credit scene i was so upset but uh, I hope it was just one of the throwaway post credit scenes because I was just like, oh, I was yeah. so, like that. Serena said she she went really because because I made a joke because when the movie ended and it started bringing up the director, yeah, I was like, oh, that and like it's so weird uh-huh. because the movie takes off and then they defeat the bad guy and within two minutes the credits are rolling. Yeah, like there's no yeah, th- there's no down. prelude right or uh interlude whatever you call it post mortem a- interlude you know whatever yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah there's no like uh post like oh hey. We're going to come down from everything. Right, this is how we're going to rebuild. Down. This is the happy ending. It's... Resolution, right? It's what it's there's like. no resolution. It's, yeah. it's, like, it's like, we beat up the thing. I Movie's over. I remember black stars. <laughs> Lightning. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Yeah, right? Like, like, like that. But that's how all the Transformers movies have been. It's always been, this is Optimus Prime. <laughs> and I'm telling everyone. 
Earth is under Autobot protection. And then it goes, and then it plays some Three Doors Down song. You know, exactly. or Lincoln Park. Sorry, Lincoln Park. Plays oh some Lincoln Park God. song. This is Optimus. Yeah. This <laughs> is Optimus Prime. And I it's fucked up again, out. but I fixed it. <laughs> but I swear this time, guys. We're good. Well, my, my favorite part is there's a part towards the end where uh, so Optimus Prime uh, in the in the trailer makes me like he turns bad. He doesn't. He gets reprogrammed. Okay. To be a bad guy. And uh, oh, we're what's getting... up, Ebony? Hey, we're filming right now. I thought Emery was in here. Sorry. Oh well, she's no, not. No, you're good. You're good. <laughs> no. Sorry. No, you're good. The baby's not in here. <laughs> Say some dumb shit. Go Get ahead. The fuck out of here. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I would like I like how I wouldn't say it to her face. I know. Until the door is closed. <laughs> um, no, so uh, no, but there's literally a part in the movie where, like in the trailers, they make a little Optimus Prime turns into a bad guy, but he's reprogrammed, and they're like, "Oh, hey, the Earth is the bad guy. You have to go defeat the Earth." So he's like brainwashed essentially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and then when he gets knocked out of the brainwash, all the Autobots around him, like all the knights and everything, they're like, "Oh, Optimus Prime, you betrayed us." And then he gets up and he goes, he goes. Autobots, knights, I am sorry. I promise I will never betray you again. Uh, like, That's it. Like he said that, like, I promise I will never betray you again. again. And we will fight. And then everyone's like, yeah. Damn. We're going to do that. And, and the, the, what were you going to say about the other thing? Or did you forget? You, you were going to oh, say the something. the race, the, uh, seeing, going to movie theaters are primarily black people or I, I, I guess. Well, because that. I, I well let me well I was seeing where you were going so I want to mention one more thing okay, go about ahead, go just ahead. the Transformers franchise. Yeah, do you think, do you think? Optimus Prime is the worst fucking Transformer. Like he is the most badass Transformer, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but he is the worst fucking Transformer. He's the most poorly utilized. I, I, I he, he they make him seem like he's such a dumbass because. <laughs> 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 he is a dumbass. Dumb ass. So let me let me explain it to you. The the wow. scene in the movie where Anthony Hopkins uh. walks hold up. The scene in the movie where Anthony Hopkins walks up to Megatron and shoots him and then just gets blown to shit and he looks like a badass for four seconds and then he's a dumbass. <laughs> yeah, That's yeah, Optimus yeah. Prime in every fucking movie. How about the third movie? Right? Is it the third one? Oh, I'm going to get to it. I'm going to get to it. Ahead, I, I, I think I know exactly what you're talking about. So, but in the first movie, you know, he goes in to fight, and he's just getting thrown around like a bitch. Yeah. Like, like he's like, I'm the leader. Let's fight. Mm-hmm. And then, like, he just gets destroyed, mm-hmm. demolished, and a human has to save him. In the second movie, he looks badass for four seconds because he's killing everyone. The second movie is where he dies, quote, unquote. Right. He's killing everyone, and all of a sudden, someone just walks up behind him and stabs him in the back, yeah, and yeah, he just yeah, dies. Yeah, yeah. And you're like, well, what a fucking bitch. Like, yeah. you're dead. And then in the third movie, he's like, Autobots, they're attacking Chicago. We need to fight. And he puts on the jetpack and shit. Is that what you're talking about? He gets tangled up in some wires. He puts on the jetpack and he goes, Autobots, we must fight. And he he flies away. And then he just runs into these wires on top of this building. And then he's suspended upside down. And he's like, "Ah, Autobots, I am stuck. And, and I he recall, stuck there for like no, twenty entire, minutes. The entire end battle, he didn't. He didn't need one he fucking didn't do robot shit. because he didn't do shit. the battle's over, right? You don't even realize oh, he's yeah. fucking gone the whole time. Yeah. The battle's over. Everybody's all injured and shit. Ah, uh, oh, the the dramatic music, of course, is going. They got all yeah. the dramatic angles and shit. Yeah. And then they show Optimus Prime, who is just chilling in these wires, and not like, a damn like, touch on him. Yes. And like, then, the fuck and then in the fourth movie. He's the badass. He's the leader. I don't know why he keeps being the leader. They need to vote him out. He just they really sucks. Do. So You're the fine. fourth movie, the, the the main bad guy shows up, and within two seconds, he defeats Optimus Prime, and he's trapped on his ship. Like, he the just fourth, catches him. So, remember in the fourth one, the guy kidnaps Optimus Prime and has him, like, chained up in his ship? Remember, like, the the fourth one was uh, the bad, like, one came down. He kidnaps Optimus Prime or Bumblebee. Pretty sure it was Optimus Prime he kidnapped. Okay. But it was, like, a it whole thing. Been. And it was so bad. And then at the end of the fourth one... <laughs> <laughs> the fifth one? No, at the end of the fourth one. Okay, okay, okay Optimus okay, okay. Prime goes. Uh, Optimus Prime, you know, he does his ending <laughs> thing, like he does at the end of all movies, yeah. and he goes, "Earth's people can be good, and that's what we've learned today." And this is Optimus Prime, and to my creators, I'm coming for you. Oh yeah! And then he flies off into that's space. Right. He looks like such a badass, He's dude. Going, I know you're going. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of the fourth movie, he's flying off into space. He's like, 
He's like, my creators, I'm coming for you. <laughs> and he flies into space. He looks like a badass. He has rockets. He has wings. And you're like, man. I got to admit, even at that part, I was like, oh, shit, he's going down. Yeah, I was like, the fourth one's going to be so badass. He's going to space. He's going to find these creators. He's going to wreck shit. It's going to be awesome. He's going to be in oh space. It's going to be so cool. God. And then the beginning of the fourth one, <laughs> he's floating in space. And he's frozen. He ran out of fuel. And he's just, like, dead in space. <laughs> he hit he hit his planet by luck. Yeah. It was luck. He's such a shit robot. He's fucking stupid. <laughs> there are toasters that are more useful. <laughs> 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 and 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 it, it it makes it worse that it wasn't the fact that he was just floating in space as this fro- frozen block. Do you know how in Family Guy, when let's say a character jumps out of a window, oh, and they're like, all mangled and bent yeah, up and like, shit. Like he wasn't That's like, how Optimus Prime he wasn't even was. Like straight or like in a box or anything <laughs> like like regular yeah. like something that might look cool. He was like floating around like he was dead. Like he like <laughs> he was doing front flips and shit, just yeah. floating. And while he's floating and shit, shit his old that? recording. But they oh, made yeah. it worse. Yeah. They made it worse because at the end of the last one, he looks like such a badass. He's flying into space. The beginning of the fourth one, he, he went like, "Oh shit, I didn't have enough fuel." <laughs> and he's just frozen in space because he fucked up again. My man, hold up. But but he's floating in space, and they make it worse because it looks ridiculous. It looks stupid, and you're constantly reminded because his little old radio thing is playing. Yeah. And it's like. This is Optimus Prime and my creators. I'm coming for you. While he's floating through space, frozen and shit. Do you, do you realize oh how he hit his planet? What's his planet called? Cybertron. Cybertron. He hit Cybertron by pure luck. Oh yeah. Because at that point, he is just a floating space rock. Yeah. If his if his planet, uh, the, if if the gravitational pull of his planet didn't suck him in, he would have still been floating. There would have yeah. been no five. And and my thing is that. That like in 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 my head I was like I was like okay I'm trying to make this make sense because in the context of the movie it can't possibly all be by chance so maybe Optimus Prime knew he was gonna run out of fuel he put himself on course for his planet right and then he shut himself down so he would go to his planet <laughs> I'm like I'm like that makes sense but that's also giving the movie way too much credit and it exactly. also didn't explain that it didn't mm-hmm. say that it just opens up and Optimus Prime is a dumbass frozen yeah, yeah, in space yeah, yeah, yeah. and then and then they make him look even worse because he, he shows up at, at the end of the movie obviously and he's like Autobots <laughs> I'll never betray you again yeah. we're going to go into battle uh, and, and, then, and then he goes Bumblebee you and Cade go I'll meet you there and I'll bring the fight to Megatron and then they go fight they go fight you know yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Wait, wait. And then they're struggling the whole time. They're losing and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Kate and then Mark Wahlberg's character is like, "Hey, hey, where's Optimus? Anyone, anyone seen Optimus?" And the other guy is like, "Optimus isn't coming. He's not coming, Kate. What? What? Optimus? He's gonna be here. He's gonna be here. Optimus said he was gonna be here. He's gonna be here. What are you doing? Yeah, yeah. You're like, what are you doing? What do you want? And uh, and and I'm like, I'm like, I thought about it. I was like, where is Optimus? Like, uh. he was absent. The whole fight. And this is the fifth one. That this is in the most recent one. Okay. He wasn't there, and because the whole thing was they were playing homage to the first part in the movie. Yeah. Where in the beginning they're like, "Oh, where's the wizard? He's not going to be here." But then he shows up. Yeah. So I get that they're playing that up at the end of this one, but at the beginning, the wizard is late and he's not showing up, and they're worried about it. But it's showing you what he's doing. Yeah. And in this one, Optimus Prime is like jerking off somewhere, yeah. and then all of a sudden he shows up in the last five minutes and goes, oh, "I'm gonna protect everyone." Wow. Like. It gives no context. At least in the third one, he was wrapped up in ropes. Right, like, right. This one didn't even say anything. Damn. Yeah, and then at the end of this one, they're like, you know, this is Optimus Prime, and I'm telling everyone it's time to come home. And then they all flap the Cybertron, and I'm yeah. like, oh my I'm like, who God. gives a shit? Like, so he holds no credibility. No one gives a fuck he about what does we it. see at the end of the movie. Like, like now. literally, lost, at the, and, and then during the whole movie, like Bumblebee's trying to be the leader, yeah. and all the other Autobots are like, "Oh, you're never going to be as good as Optimus Prime." There's a part where they say that, uh-huh. and I, in oh, my yeah. in my head, I'm like, "How good is Optimus Prime? Like, what exactly? Is, <laughs> what does he do?" Um, so to to go into my theory about why white people. Not just white people, I guess. <laughs> Whoa! We're <laughs> talking about think? switching so lanes. Why white people suck? Um, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, so why? I guess I don't know if it's white people. I I feel like it's more white people. Yeah. Um, but I I'll, I'll just say people in general. Why people in general love this movie? Uh huh. Like why Transformers movies keep getting made? Why they're so successful? Why they're commercial successes? Why they make so much goddamn money? Is because they do everything. Mm-hmm. In this movie, hmm. they have 
They have weird. They, they have comedy. They have comedy that yeah. that pokes fun at race. They have comedy that fo- pokes fun at drugs in the earlier movies. Yeah. They have the weird uh, hypersexualized comedy that yeah. is really just out of place and awkward. Yeah. There's literally a part in the movie where Mark Wahlberg's like, oh, I'm going to listen to this professor. Why? She's wearing like a stripper dress. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to listen to her. And she goes, oh, does my dress make you uncomfortable? I can just take it off. And he goes like, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah do that. And I was like, where did that yeah. come from? Like, why does that have to be a line? Anyway, so it does that. It has the humor, the hypersexualized stuff. And then it has the quote unquote romance. Mm-hmm. It has the oh, romance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It has the adventure where they're in the submarine. They're going to this place. Yeah. It has the family part of it. Yeah. It has the military. So everyone's like, oh, yeah, my Marines are in the movie. Woo! And then yeah, it has yeah. the cool, fast cars. It has the car chases. It has the big explosions. It has the climactic battle. It has the the very shitty bad guy where you're like, oh, he's the bad guy. Yep. He's bad. We got to fight him. There's no thought. You know exactly. what I mean? Exactly. And then it has the government going like, we're the government. Yeah. And then it has everyone like, we don't listen to the government. It just does everything. It hits it like like somewhere there's a movie producer that goes, People like it when movies have these twenty things in them. And Michael yeah. Bay goes, We're doing everything. You know? <laughs> and the room goes crazy. Yeah. Yeah, they're like, Whoa! He's a visionary. God among men. <laughs> You know what, man? I don't want to say it appeals to white people. I want to say it appeals to stupid people and kids. So white people. I'm kidding. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> hey, what? Well, see, but that's why, like, the people that go to these movies and walk out and go, yeah, that was great, are the middle school kids, are the high school kids, are the the, the grease monkey guys and stuff. Because yeah. they go in there. Like, like, let me put it this way. Anyone can go into that movie and like something about it. Right. Like the little, the, the kids can go in there and go, oh, that little girl wants to help Transformers. Uh-huh. That's great. I, I, I like that. I, I like that. That's the part of the movie that I like. The grease monkeys are going to go in and go, oh man, I, I, I dig cars. They're driving exactly. fast cars. I love it. Love cars. The horny teenagers. There's a hot girl there. I like that. The other girls are like, oh, but they're trying to be romantic. I like that. Yep. And then... Uh, Damn, it touches all bases, Yeah, and man. then, and then th- there's the white woman in there whose husband is the police. She's like, I love this movie. Yeah. That would that would be what Johnny would do if this was his situation. You know, <laughs> you. But... And so, like, I think it just, like I said, it does everything. It's the big action piece. It's the big effects. But it, it's so crazy how a movie with this budget, with these high-end actors like Anthony Hopkins, Mark Wahlberg... Uh, Stanley uh, Tucci, whatever his name is, um, those guys like they're such high profile actors. Yeah, the Transformers look damn good. The the action looks damn good. Like when it's on screen and it's happening, it looks good. But it's crazy how much effort is in this movie, and how little effort, effort is in the movie. In the movie. Yeah. Like the effort is on the production and on the the things that are happening, mm-hmm. but there's no effort on. The production and the things that are happening. You know what, man? Like, I don't know how else to explain it. It's, a, it, it's, Look, it's a, a. Well, go ahead. Right. So I think there's there are two parts of the human brain. Right. It's gonna get real fucking deep here over go Transformers. Ahead, there's two parts of the human brain that really shape a person's personality and level mm. of intellect. Right. Yeah. You either have people who are really, um, really visually stimulated. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, those would be your grease monkeys, right? Your typical stereotypical jocks, right? Yeah. <laughs> they're visually stimulated, but their 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 intelligence <clears throat> comes in kinesthetically, meaning they're really intelligent with their body, right? Mm, okay. The athletes, the grease monkeys, the handyman, yeah, yeah. right? And then you have the people who are who are intellectually stimulated, right? Yeah. That means they like to think think deeply. This is what gets their endorphins rushing. This is what gives them that serotonin rush, right? And this comes from thinking deeply, thinking critically, solving problems like that that yeah. involve the mind, mm-hmm. right? And you have your comic book nerds, guys. You know what I mean? The typical stereotypical. Yeah, nerd. yeah. And so when you have when you have a movie that appeals to people who are very visual, right? Mm-hmm. There's such a broad spectrum of people like that that you're going to get a, a a wide base of people going to your movie. Oh yeah, so your movie's going to sell a lot. That's exactly That's true, why yeah. Transformers still exists. The franchise, yeah, because because it was touches a, everyone. Exactly. There was a guy behind me, man, mm-hmm. and like going into the movie, I was like, how how the fuck am I still going to this movie? How is it still selling tickets? I mean, <laughs> while I bought the fucking ticket, yeah, right. But well, see, they, I think there are some people that genuinely enjoy it. And I think there are people like me and you who are like, this is going to be shit. Uh huh. I'm I'm invested. I've seen the other movies. I'm going to go see shit. But there was a grown ass man behind me, right? 
And whenever a, a, a cool car would come by, he would go, oh, look at that fucking car. That's nice, fool. And whenever a dumbass joke would be said, he'd say, <laughs> whenever a, a stupid ass, really unnecessary, but expensive looking angle would come on the screen, he'd be like, oh, damn, that's, that's intense. I look back, it's the dumbest looking grease ball you would ever imagine. Yeah. And I was like, okay, that's those are the guys that enjoy this fucking that movie. That are paying for it. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're the ones who are bringing their, their three different child support families to go see the movie. And you know what, man? I'm getting even deeper. Go ahead. They are... God, we're talking so much shit about just everyone right now. <laughs> they're playing close to their primal roots. If this was true. 54 BC and we're mm -hmm. still running around with toupees on or tarps on covering mm -hmm. our junk in the jungle fighting off wildebeest, those would be the guys that survive. Mm -hmm. That's why there seems to be more of them mm -hmm. because they're good with their hands, right? Yeah. If you're fighting off a lion, it doesn't matter how intellectually gifted you are you've got to be physically gifted yeah and for some reason there's this weird ratio where people who are physically gifted are not very mentally gifted yeah and people who are mentally gifted are not very physically gifted yeah and in that time where we evolved the most humans mm -hmm. you needed to be physically gifted yeah and mind you evolution takes a long time yeah well be because still everything <clears throat> everything that we evolved into yeah was physical we had to evolve physical mm -hmm. to 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 create calluses on our feet to walk yeah, exactly to to, to hunt mm -hmm. you know we had to be physical with the way our eyes grew with the way our hair grew with how we developed hair in certain parts of our body to keep yeah. us warm and then uh even in semi modern eras when you have like oh we have boats yeah we have uh cars and shit they were still battling like smallpox and shit. Exactly. So then the physically fit were the people that survived. That survived. Because of their immune systems and shit. And you evolved to survive. So, stupid people are the superior race, man. Yeah, well, because stupid people don't get into anything else. Like, 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 stupid people aren't the ones who question authority. Stupid people aren't the ones who yeah. want to strive for anything more. They go, I'm good right. at where I'm at. I'm, I'm fine. Right. So maybe so, it is a good balance. Maybe it is a good balance. It is, because you need both. Why, are you a communist? Because someone has to be in charge? <laughs> no, <I'm kidding. laughs> no. But you had to have somebody to build the pyramid, and you had to have a guy to draw up the design for the pyramid. That is true. You know what that I mean? That is true. So it there, works in perfect yeah, harmony. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's, uh, to because we're talking about movies, it's not every... Well, we are. <laughs> <laughs> not, not everyone can be the main character. Mm -hmm. Some people have got to be mm. the side characters. Like, yeah, man. Some, like, it, as much as... As much as as you are the character of your own story, mm -hmm. you've got to sometimes know and accept that you're not the main character of everyone's story. Yeah. Like, so, you know, right now I'm the main character of my story because I'm doing this. I'm going to go home, continue to battle the things I got to do with to work hard, to do right. whatever I'm doing. But then, so like right now in my life, I'm the main character and you're the supporting actor right. in my life. But then when I leave, I'm still the main character. When I leave, you're still the main character of your story. Right. And right now, I'm the side character of yours. Mm -hmm. So th there's – but then there are also people who their story the, that they're the main character of isn't that interesting. Like, yeah. It's, yeah. Like, yeah. And you, you unfortunately just got to accept sometimes that some people are B players. Some right. people are on the B team. Some people are on the A team. Mm -hmm. And I think that's just – how life is unfortunately like it's not fair yeah but some people some people are the coaches who are the a team mm -hmm. i mean you can kind of argue this but some people are the coaches who are on the a team who get shit done and some people are the players mm -hmm. who are there to be the pawn and to do the work yeah part of it you know like ceos they're the ceo mm -hmm. how much work do they do compared to the dude who's sitting in their call center mm-hmm but look at how much that person's getting paid and look how much CEO's getting paid. Because he starts it. He's the guy, yeah. you know? It's so. the same. I think we measure work, right, on a level of physicality. Mm -hmm. Really, the CEO is doing <laughs> the same amount of work. I'd say even 10 times as much work as the guy flipping the patties at, in the line of McDonald's, whereas yeah. the CEO of McDonald's. Yeah, and I think that's because a... it's not you're not looking at how much work is, is being done. Mm -hmm. You have to look at what is at stake if that person doesn't show up. Oh, yeah. If yeah. the CEO of McDonald's doesn't show up for a month, there's no McDonald's or yeah. somebody else has, has to step in real quick or else that empire falls. If the if Henry the fry cook shows up, doesn't show up for a month, yeah. get a new fucking fry cook. You have to look at what's at stake. The, the level of work at that level is measured in pressure. 
the amount of pressure. Yeah, and, and, and but like you're saying, intellect. Yeah, it goes back to the primal thing. Yeah, like like the reason these movies are popular, the reason Transformers continues to succeed is because it goes off primal stuff for mm-hmm. people. Mm-hmm. Now, at the same time, work is very primal to people. Mm-hmm. You know, if you if if you if you go to this, if you take two guys, right, mm-hmm. and one guy's a construction worker, he lays concrete all day. And he's he's working hard, breaking his back, and you you say, hey, here's a computer programmer, mm-hmm. and he puts in code all day to the computer and makes sure things are working. And you ask people which one's working harder, they're gonna say the construction worker because mm-hmm. physically, mm-hmm. physically he's working harder. But he gets to go home at the end of the day and go do his thing, and then come right. back and work hard the next day. Yeah. Now CEOs. People who code, people who do websites, people who make YouTube videos. I think content creators, people who do YouTube videos, producers mm-hmm. of shows, they get the worst rap, especially YouTube people. Yeah. Like people who do YouTube and podcasting and everything, people go, they're doing YouTube. Like right. if you look at any major YouTuber and you ask them about their parents or they say what their parents think about it, a lot of them go, my parents have no idea what I do. They think yeah. it's dumb. My friends don't understand how I'm making money. But you know what? They're working harder than their parents. Exactly. They're working harder than their friends. Exactly. Because anyone anyone can flip a burger. Anyone yeah. can be taught to lay a road. Mm-hmm. Anyone can work at Walmart. Anyone can learn how to fix a car. It is a very specific and a very special person who can, one, have the drive to create content, right. and two, have the know-how and the sensibility to look at what people like and to use that to their advantage mm-hmm. to make content that is uh, accessible, mm-hmm. that is feasible, and that people want to buy into. Exactly. Like, because you, you're you're essentially making something from nothing. Exactly. You know? Exactly. And the thing with that is that those people, uh, they hustle more. Mm-hmm. Because people seem to think like, oh, hustle is running to your car when you yeah, got to get yeah. something. Hustle is working. Hustle is working fast and always doing something. Mm-hmm. People seem to think that 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 if you're not doing something in any given moment, you're not hustling. Yeah, man. But to, I think hustling is the opposite where uh, – not the opposite, but hustling is, isn't is always doing something. Uh-huh. It's doing something always. Like, exactly. Like, exactly. Let, let me put it this way. Hustling isn't like, oh, I'm at work. I got to hustle. I got to hustle. I always got to be doing something. I got to be in motion. Mm-hmm. So you're doing something. Now, the what I really think hustling is, is being at dinner. Right. And sitting there uh, with all your friends, all your family talking and having a good time and your phone ringing. And mm-hmm. you got to walk out of that dinner because you got to take a business call. Exactly. Because it's not the right time. You don't want to do it, but you have to do it because you're hustling because you're building something. Mm-hmm. You're doing it. Hustling is when you're not making any money and you're doing it. Right. Hustling is when you're losing more than you're gaining, but you're building a relationship. You're helping a customer. You're doing something that's going to further your company or your endeavors, so you're doing it. Exactly. Yeah, hustling is is always being open to do that thing that you love, not just doing something. Yeah. There's no off switch. Exactly. Like – you know, you like uh, to me, if someone's like, man, uh, Willie was out there just I, I don't know why I'm using my brother's name, but just an example. Oh, Willie was out there flipping burgers at McDonald's today. He was hustling, man. Yeah, he was yeah, hustling yeah. all day. And all you were doing was was on the phone and not saying that's a real situation. But yeah, Willie was hustling. So he was doing something all day. Yeah. But I was on the phone all day building up a company, coming up with ideas, exactly. doing this, doing that. <laughs> And and then like oh well you know what while I was on the phone I was supposed to be going out with Serena to have dinner with her that I had to cancel because I have mm-hmm. a business thing I have to do now mm-hmm. and uh you know like for me I've had that where hustle is like hey I'm supposed to go out with Serena tonight or I got plans tonight but I gotta cancel because yeah. I have to go to a sales appointment or mm-hmm. I've got to go make money mm-hmm. you know that's what hustle is I think exactly and I think uh like like to round it out uh that's the primal part of it where people think work and hustle is all physical Mm -hmm. when it's not, it's Mm -hmm. mental. That's why CEOs have mental breakdowns. That's why people who are rich kill themselves exactly because they engross themselves in what they're doing. It's so, it's so much more at stake, not only with the company, but with the person. Yeah. Because exhaustion is exhaustion. Yeah. But one form of exhaustion is way more devastating than the other. Mm -hmm. If my job involved me working in a warehouse, flipping boxes all day, I'm going to get physically exhausted. What's the worst thing that could happen with physical exhaustion? Boom. Ow, I pop a bicep. 
fuck. Mm -hmm. Work compensation, whatever. That's that's the product of physical, true physical exhaustion. Mental exhaustion, I lose my fucking mind. Exactly. I'm in a car recording physical? myself on Facebook Live because my wife cheated on me, so I'm going to shoot an old man or something. Yeah, that's man. The, that's the culmination. Man, that's some suck that's shit, some man. Suck shit, man. Um, that's the culmination of, of mental exhaustion. Yeah, because physical is something you can always heal from. Physical, right. like, I can be exhausted and go to bed and wake up the next morning, and I'm good. Exactly. You know, like, like let me put it this way. There's a, there's a guy out there right now who just got done working his job at Amazon. And he just got done loading all these boxes, working the crane, lifting the boxes onto the shelves. And he hurt his arm and he's exhausted. He's going to go home. He's going to eat and he's going to sleep for eight to nine hours and wake up tomorrow and do the same thing. Yeah. That's great. He heals himself. He's ready to work again. Mm -hmm. Now there's a CEO somewhere who's like, we just lost investors. Everyone's quitting. I've got this workload. My uh, my son needs money for school. My daughter needs to take this school trip. Yeah. I need to pay for another one's uh, college stuff. Uh, me and my wife aren't on good terms right now. But I've got to deal with payroll. I've got to make sure other people are getting paid so they can support their families. Yeah. I've got to make sure I'm carrying out stuff for the business to grow. I've got to find out why we're losing people and how to keep those people in. I've got to take a pay cut because we've got to pay raise other people so they stay. Mm -hmm. And he's going to be at the office till 11 p.m. and he's going to go home and he's going to sleep. Yep. He, and he's going to he's going to go home by 12. He's not going to go to bed till 2 cuz he's staying up thinking about it and worrying mm -hmm. about it and then he's going to wake up at 5 to go to work again the next day. Yeah. And that's every day. Every he doesn't day. lose that. He doesn't have the point where he goes home and goes, "Oh, hey, this is it. I am done." Right. You know what I mean? Like, like There's he, no off switch. Yeah, he, he doesn't get to go home and go, my work day is over, hang my hat at the door, and I don't got to do nothing until I go back into work. So it blows my mind when I hear the argument that minimum wage workers, right, mm -hmm. should be like, they want to get pay raises to $11, $15 an mm -hmm. hour. My thing is, you're not getting paid on the amount of toughness you, you, you have. You... You're not getting yeah. paid in the amount of effort you put into your job. Yeah. You're getting paid in the amount of value you have to your job. Yeah. Like I said, if the fry cook does not show up for a month, he is not that valuable to he gets the replaced. success of that company. Exactly. He gets replaced. Exactly. If the CEO does not show up to that job, it's a fucking wrap. You get paid to keep you at that job. So if I want you there at that job more, yeah. I'm going to pay you more. Exactly. That's how it goes. Yeah. You, you don't... You don't get paid because you're working hard hours. It's a hot kitchen and all that. You're getting paid because anyone can do your job, mm -hmm. and there are 20 people who are willing to do it for exactly. less than what you're working. Exactly. And that's just that's how it is. Yeah. And you know you're you're not qualified to do anything else. You, mm -hmm. you don't deserve more than that. Mm -hmm. You know. So the 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 minimum wage thing, I get it. I get people want to get paid more. Um, I don't think it's the I don't think the argument is necessarily getting paid more because they feel valued more. I think the argument is getting paid more so you can sustain yourself. Right. Because you used to be able to work a minimum wage job and be able to have a house and a family and all that. Yeah, yeah. You know, so that's the main argument. But I think that's a that's a thing we got to fix with the economy, not a thing we got to fix by just paying people more. Mm -hmm. Because I, it's so stupid. Because I've talked to people that argue for that, mm -hmm. and I, I you see it on Facebook, you see it on social media, you see people talking about like, oh, we need to lift the minimum wage. They don't fix nothing. Yeah. It doesn't fix a damn thing. Because mm -hmm. you're gonna lift the minimum wage, and everything else elevates. Yeah, you're gonna lift the minimum uh, or raise the minimum wage, and then McDonald's like, oh, dude. We got to pay all these people $15 for this hour of work and our burger costs $3. We got to make it $5 now yeah. so that we can break even and still make the same amount of profits that we were making. Mm -hmm. So then they raise money and then other people have to raise money because now they're paying their workers. And now the workers are like, oh, hey, I need to get paid. Like, oh, my cell phone bill is $300 for me and my two friends. So I need to get paid $15 an hour so then I can pay that off easier. Mm -hmm. But then after everything elevates after inflation after all those things you're like oh now my cell phone bill is four hundred dollars so you didn't fix anything exactly it just adjusts to where it's still the same amount yeah i mean, not the same amount but it's still you're still paying for what you're doing mm -hmm. you know so i don't know I, I i'm not gonna get into how we fix that i don't know how we fucking fix that but the point is that people are arguing for that and saying we need to lift the minimum wage it's, mm -hmm. it's stupid it's like those people who are standing outside of of uh of the white house going like we don't like trump why because we don't like him. But why? Because I don't like him. <laughs> and then one guy on the news one day says, oh, we don't agree with his rhetoric. And then every, all of a sudden everyone's like, what do you not like about Trump? 
Trump. I don't like his rhetoric. Uh, I don't like things that he's saying. W what does rhetoric mean? Y you know, like his rhetoric that he uses. <laughs> like, yeah, like yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like people just grab onto shit and they just argue and they're uneducated. They don't know what the hell they're arguing about. Yeah, like man. I know I'm not educated enough to give you a response, mm -hmm. like what we can do, but I'm educated enough to understand that what people are arguing for, like I get it. There's probably someone out there who goes, no, no, no. We're not just arguing for the raise of minimum wage. Uh -huh. We're arguing to do this and this is our plan. Well, that's great. You know that the 50,000 other people who are arguing this argument do not know that. And yeah. they're just saying raise the minimum wage because it sounds good and it sounds yeah. easy. So, God damn it, it's a mess. Yeah. All in all, Transformers was trash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's all the economy's fault. Um, yeah. So, God damn. Talking about going off on a tangent. but I know. Yeah. It so all to, ties in. Yeah. To, it all ties into everything. So w w essentially what, what we're – what we're saying at the end of the day is that um, white people are terrible because Josh Peck is white mm -hmm. and he hates Drake mm -hmm. and Drake did absolutely nothing wrong. Who The other person who did something wrong was Michael Bay when he made Transformers because it sucks. The mm -hmm. other thing that sucks is white people who want to shush you during a Transformers movie. And then uh, white people are white because there's a car outside that's white and they ran over shit. So they're shitty. And that's, that's how it all ties in. It all ties. And I think the and, overarching theme here is if the iCarly theme song made sense, we wouldn't have these, we issues. wouldn't have this discussion. Yeah. There'd be nothing to talk about. I, I, I totally agree. If the iCarly theme song made a lick of sense, we wouldn't be having any of these issues right now. Damn. Live life, breathe air. What I know the? somehow we're going to get there. Where are we going? I have no idea. This is a web show. I don't know. I don't know. <sighs> I just. I'll give Mr. Bell a call, see what he can tell us. <laughs> but uh, so I guess we'll go ahead and wrap up. Thank you guys very much for listening to uh, this episode of Break Time. We really appreciate it. As always, check the description for our social media stuff. Um, can I plug my vlog? Yeah, man. Go okay, ahead. cool, cool. Yeah, so I got some dates. Uh, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, that's a, the, a reference to another that's podcast. It. But uh, I do have a, uh, a YouTube channel where I upload – um, vlogs uh, from my life right now I'm trying to make it like a weekly thing maybe bi-weekly I don't know I'm still trying to figure out the schedule aspect of it but there are two vlogs that have gone up in the last two weeks if you want to check those out um, you can search Alex Chavez vlogs on YouTube but I'll probably also put the link in the description but yeah check those out um, show them some support and we're also going to be doing some other cool stuff with break time uh, hopefully in the next few weeks or so um, but yeah Iman is there anything you want to say before we close out this episode of break time no, nah, man. Once again, thanks for listening, guys. Uh, just remember, whatever struggle you face in life, just live life, breathe there, because I know somehow we're going to get there. And be so wonderful. wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. All right, you guys. Well, uh, yeah, you know, it's all for real. I'm just telling you just how I feel. And <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, you guys. But again, thank you very much for listening to this episode of Break Time, and we will catch you next time. You. Yeah.